Hello, this is Jordan Clark from the Backyard Bucket List, and today we're going to be talking about the best starter full-frame camera for anybody. If you're looking for a great full-frame for yourself or for a friend or like I did for a loved one, um, I would look no further than the Sony A7 II. Let's get started. So the first reason why the Sony a7 II is a great starter full frame camera is because it is mirrorless. And the reason why I think a mirrorless full frame camera is so important is because that is where all the camera manufacturers are heading towards. Before you had DSLRs, which are still, still making and contributing a little bit. But if you're reading the tea leaves, the mirrorless cameras are the way of the future and where those companies are gonna be investing their money so by investing in a mirrorless camera, when you start buying lenses and different things, those are not gonna become obsolete. You're gonna be able to use them for a long time with your current system. And I would say lenses are more important to invest in than a fancy expensive camera. So again, if you're looking at full frame cameras, no matter what brand it is, I would look at mirrorless, because that is the way that it is moving towards. And to give you a little background, I actually bought this camera um, in December for my wife for Christmas because I was looking at getting her a full frame camera. I actually was not a part of the Sony ecosystem. I had Panasonic, but the reason why I chose Sony is because it has a great lens options. They are the first company to get into the full frame mirrorless markets. And because of that, they have more lenses for full frame mirrorless cameras than anybody else. Their lens line is called E-mount. And when you are picking out a lens, you just wanna make sure that it's a full frame E-mount lens. They also do have crop lenses for their APS-C sensors. So let's make sure it is a full frame sensor. But because they have so many lens choices to choose from, you're not limited to only certain ones. For instance, when Canon got into the mirrorless markets with their R mount cameras, they came out with really premium, very expensive lenses. So if you wanted to get into the Canon mirrorless market, you would have to spend a lot of money to get one of their lenses. Uh, the lenses, for the most part, were around 2000 even some of $3,000. And if you're just getting into photography and the full frame market, that's a lot of money to put down. Um, to put down first. Uh, Canon is coming out with some cheaper choice options, but Sony's been around for so long, you already have your Pro-Line lenses, which they're still coming out with, and then you have more, your more affordable lenses that you can choose from as well. And they also have a lot of third-party lenses. So this is a Sigma 35 1.4, and my wife actually um, saw one of her friends had this lens and took a lot of pictures of her kids. So this is the reason why she wanted this lens Sigma creates great lenses, they're very sharp, um, and they're a great affordable option if you don't wanna buy a Sony native lens. Another thing I would recommend about lenses is I got her the camera for Christmas, and instead of just buying a lens that I thought she would like, we went to a camera store, and we were able to test out a couple different lenses to see what felt comfortable. When we did rent the lenses, we rented a Sony 35 1.8, and we also rented a Sony 24 to 2.8 G Master. And something I learned from that is, even though I couldn't afford the 24 to 70 G Master, it's over $2,000, um, it's kind of a bigger lens. I learned that it was a little too big and uncomfortable for my, than what my wife wanted to use. The 35 1.8 from Sony, Sony is smaller than this, and that was a lot more manageable, and it was a great vocal length for her to practice and to use. Uh, because of that, we kind of got right in the middle. We got where the Sony 35 is probably about this big. The Sigma is a little bigger, but it has a faster aperture, which gives you the greater blurred depth of field background. So because of the lens choices, I would highly recommend choosing Sony as your full frame uh, camera system to get into. Because long term, you're gonna wanna invest in your lenses and you're gonna and you wanna get the most out of what do you choose. Next is price. So when the Sony a7 II came out in 2014, it was listed for $1,700 brand new. Uh, nowadays, you can find them brand new for 
about $1,300, which is kind of impressive that it's held on to its price for that long. But here's a little secret that I would recommend if you wanna buy one of these cameras. Uh, go ahead and look for used cameras. Um, I like to use Facebook Marketplace. I'm on there all the time looking for cameras and lenses. Um, I bought my first camera on eBay. I got a great deal. Um, I bought my camera and four lenses and an adapter um, and batteries for about 50% off of what it normally would have cost if I bought everything brand new. So you can find great things used. And the great part about buying these premium cameras, usually people that are buying premium cameras tend to take better care of their cameras as well. Um, so this was a great condition when we got it. Um, and you can find these on Facebook Marketplace for about five or $600. So you can cut that price in about half than what they're currently going for. Even though this camera is about six years old, it still holds up and it's great for photography. Um, the a7 II introduced the IBIS, the in-body stabilization. And with that IBIS, you can get more of a steady video shot, or if you're doing photography, get less shake or blur um, through that in-body stabilization. Um, and a lot of people love the Sonys for video, and the a7 II was kind of just getting into that. You can do 1080p at 60 frames per second. Um, it does not have 4K. If you want that, you have to go up to the next version, the a7 III. But for the most part, 1080p ever, I've noticed is good enough, especially if you're starting. To give you an idea, I do most of my video using a Panasonic GH5, which can do 4K. 60 frames per second at 10 bit. So if you're just looking at video stats, that is pretty impressive. But to be honest, I hardly ever use a 4K anymore because it's a lot easier to edit 1080p. And typically what I do is I'll edit everything in 1080p. And then when I'm exporting, I'll do that in 4K because when it uploads on YouTube with all the compression and everything, you really can't notice the difference anyways. So 1080 is fine, especially as you're getting started on a camera. Another great thing about Sony's is they have great autofocus. That's one thing I wish my Panasonic was better at is autofocus, especially in continuous autofocus. So if you do a lot of uh, video, Sony is a great choice to have. Uh, they use a hybrid autofocus system with contrast and phase detection. And it's especially if you're like my wife and I, autofocus is very important when you're taking pictures of kids and your family because they're running around all over the place. You want to be able to lock on to them, be in focus on their face, and the Sonys are great at autofocus. Um, I will say, I know a lot of people say the battery life of Sonys are not great, especially their newer ones have gotten better and are rated for more battery life. Um, of the little bit I've been using the Sony of the past couple of months, I haven't had much complaints about the battery life for photography. I haven't done a lot of video on it yet, but the battery life seems to last for any outing we go on. So no complaints as far as battery life. But if you're looking at getting into photography, especially in the full frame markets, I would look at the Sony a7 series. I personally love this a7 II. I think it's a great value and you get your money's worth. And instead of investing in an expensive camera body, invest in a and a cheaper body that can give you all the functions you need and then use that money to invest in different lenses that you want. Because the great part about investing in lenses is when you finally outgrow this body, you'll have lenses that you can use as soon as you upgrade to your more expensive modern body. If you have any questions about the a7 II, make sure to leave a comment down below or let me know what your favorite feature was. And make sure to subscribe if you wanna see more videos about products and ways to create memories for your family and friends through video and photography. Make sure to like and subscribe to this channel. All right, I hope you guys have a great day and we'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.